Hi friends, are you thinking about quitting drinking or you're sober curious or you just recently quit drinking and you're wondering how you can be successful with this decision? Well, in this video, I'm gonna share with you how I got through that first year, some challenges that I faced, things that worked for me, things that didn't work for me and what it was like once I hit that year mark. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name's Jamie. I'm a registered nurse. I make content on wellness and um, self-improvement and empowerment. And in my opinion, quitting drinking was the biggest form of empowerment that I ever could have done for myself. And so I really wanted to share my story with others. And I hope that I can offer you some hope and inspiration if you are wanting to quit drinking or struggling with it or just sober curious you know so let's jump into this video so if you haven't seen my other videos i do have a video on why i decided to quit drinking and what it was like in that first 30 days now we're going to jump from that first 30 days into the first year as a whole and what i did to be successful in my decision to quit drinking and a little bit of background um you know i started drinking when i was 14 pretty much drank every single day of my life until I was 44 years old. Um, but I took a big decline in like the last three years. And so I decided to quit drinking. Nothing terrible had happened to me necessarily. I, I didn't, you know, get in an accident or get a DUI or lose my job or do any of that stuff that you kind of associate with um, hitting a rock bottom, but I hit a personal rock bottom and it was just a deep level of disappointment in myself and, and feeling like I had lost control over my own mind. And so I did make that decision to quit drinking and it was definitely the best decision that I could have ever made, but it comes with challenges, let me tell you, because just the world we live in promotes drinking, loves drinking, um, glamorizes drinking, and it's everywhere. And pretty much everyone I know still drinks except for me. So I have had challenges with that. Um, so let's, let's talk about how I kind of overcame all of that. So shortly after that 30 days, I realized like, okay, well now this is me moving forward. What do I do? I just didn't know what to do. I have a lot of experience with AA because of my own father. I mentioned him in my other videos that he was an alcoholic and you know, it still is in recovery and he's done really well. He's like got like 30 years of sobriety now, but uh, I was about 16 or 17 when he kind of hit his rock bottom and I saw it all. And I experienced, you know, what he went through and I had told myself that if I, if I was going to quit, I wasn't going to put my family through that kind of turmoil that he put us through. And so it was like a deep decision knowing if I quit, I'm quitting forever. There was no one day at a time for me. And I also, I had gone to AA meetings with my father and I, I feel like AA is such an amazing program and it really, really works for some people. And the only reason why I can say that it doesn't work for me is maybe that I associate it with some negative feelings just back then when when my dad first started going to AA and we were still a little bitter and unwilling to forgive him for certain things. But I also feel like I have sort of an empathic nature about me and just sometimes being in a room with so much emotion all at once isn't healthy for me. So I tried going to AA. I went to a few all women's meetings and I just, it just didn't work for me. I love that it works for other people, but I went down a different path to stay sober. And so is what I did was number one, I picked a project that required a lot of focus and well, two projects actually one, was to run a marathon in under five hours and 50 minutes, which for me was amazing. I'm a very slow runner. I run marathons. I had run 13 half marathons and three marathons, but now since I wasn't drinking anymore, I felt like my fitness, fitness level would be so much better. So I decided to really train hard for a marathon. So that gave me some focus. 
I also decided that I would um, get published in the Journal of Emergency Nursing on my work on compassion fatigue and burnout. So those two things gave me a lot of focus as far as keeping my mind busy, I guess you could say. Um, the other thing that I did was I started to read the Quitlet is what it's called, but it's um, books on sobriety from different authors. And I follow some social media posts, which I still follow all of these five years later. And those were really helpful for me. So I thought I would share my top five books and social media sites. And then I'll go into a little bit about each one and what I kind of got from it. So the first book that I read was A Happier Hour by Rebecca Weller, and that was really good. And it was a good story because she too, like me, was never, you know, um, classified in that rock bottom state that you often associate with alcoholism, you know, but still she had a problem and she's like a health and wellness expert yet she was you know, drinking so much and was affecting her life. So I related to that story, it's a good story. By far my favorite book was The Unexpected Joy of Sobriety. I swear I read this book, oh, it's by Katherine Gray. I read this book and literally fell in love with Katherine as an author and her story and the way that she wrote the book and then all of the tips. So I really want you to read it. I don't wanna you know, take any credit for her work, but she talked about sober celebrities, which I had no idea. Just all of the celebrities that are sober and yet they drink and stuff in movies, but when you really think about it, it sort of lifts that curtain of, of course they don't drink. Look at how gorgeous and in shape they are. Their skin is glowing. Um, they obviously can't drink, so. I, I just, it opened my eyes in like a lot of different ways. Um, Catherine also had a little like catchphrase where she would always get so drunk and wasted and her friends would say like, let's get Kath tonight. And it just really made kind of the super depressing, destructive nature of alcohol almost amusing and heartwarming at the same time. I really like that book. I read This Naked Mind by Annie Grace. She also is a big social media presence. So she's a good person to buy that book and follow her on social media. She was really inspiring and she kind of breaks down the whole like reality of alcohol um, versus just how it's perceived by everyone and what it does to our bodies and things like that. I started to read Quit the, Quit the Drink Easily by Jason Vale, but he's really aggressive. He was not warm and fuzzy at all like Catherine Gray or Annie Grace. So I had to put his book down for a while because for some reason it was just too like assaultive to my very sensitive spirit at the time, but I did eventually end up reading his book and it had a lot of good insight in it. But I think he was, in his book, he more is like, yeah, just quit. Like it's a no brainer, just quit. But I didn't feel that way when I first quit. I felt like I was breaking up with <laughs> my true love basically and giving up my comfort and my best friend. And I was actually really mourning that loss quite a bit. And um, I wasn't quite in the mindset to cut it off completely. I had to sort of be all toxic with myself and really miss drinking. And so I think though focusing on the positive things that I was gaining rather than the things I was losing was something really helpful. And I gained that from the social media sites and the books that I had read. On social media, I follow like Drop the Bottle and Recovery is the New Black and the Sober Girl Society. And I just like it. They put on like meaningful quotes on their, their pages every day and just a reminder. So when I'm scrolling on my phone, when I'm having my coffee in the morning, it's like, who woke up hungover free? Yes, me, oh my gosh, me. So those are the things that I used during that first um, year. What, what I did not expect to happen when I quit drinking was that now I had no numbing agent in my life and so I had to feel all the things that I had been trying to avoid and all of that just really came to the surface and I had to make some huge changes in my life. 
Um, and I, I wasn't ready for that. That was very difficult in so many ways, but it was so wonderful in so many ways. And so where I am today is pretty much 100% different than where I was five years ago. And it's all because now I can't live in a state where I'm unhappy. Because before I could live in a state where I was unhappy and then I would come home and have glasses of wine and forget about it and wake up and do it all over again. And that's how I lived my life every day, every day, every day. Well, once you have no numbing agent, you can't just sit there being miserable all the time. I had to take action. I had to make changes and it has been such a roller coaster and I'm so thankful to my friends and family who have stuck by my side because they're probably like, oh, this was quite the roller coaster for them too. At the end of my first year of not drinking is when I decided I have to make some big changes in my life what I'm doing right now isn't working for me. And guess what happened? COVID happened. And it was perfect timing because I was an ER nurse before. And all of a sudden it was just so clear to me uh, because I had had COVID in the beginning before, um, before the vaccines had come out. So I already had some sort of immunity and I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna go back to the ER. So I quit my job and I went back to the ER so that I could work in the COVID units since I had immunity and I wanted to be a part of history and to help people. And I wouldn't have been able to do that if I had been stuck in my cycle that I had been in. And so experiencing that was amazing. All of the people that had been in my life, but in the toxic version of my life, started to fall away. And it's sad, that was a mournful experience too because some of these people, I considered some of my very closest and dearest friends, but once I quit drinking, you know, they really didn't have anything in common with me anymore. And so even if it wasn't my choice, it might've been their choice not to continue the relationship or our friendship. But that opened up a lot of room for other things that have been really positive for me. So do expect that you're gonna go through a lot of changes. There will be losses, but if you aren't experiencing loss, you're not growing and it will all work out in the best for you. So it's that whole saying of, if you're struggling and you're in your first year of not drinking and you're having relapses, I know you've probably already heard the phrase, but just remind yourself it's giving up one thing for everything or giving up everything for one thing. And that thing doesn't love you back. Throughout that first year, I also know, I also found out who my true friends and people were and are. And I can remember going over to one of my friend's house and we always drank together every time we went out for the whole time I've ever known her. And I went over to her house. And again, remember, when I talk to you about me quitting drinking, all of this is going on in my head. I don't know what's going on in other people's heads, but to me, it was like I was expressing this huge weakness. If I told someone that I was quitting drinking, like I had a problem because I couldn't handle this horribly toxic, addictive substance. And, and that's such a wrong way of looking at it, but that's how I felt. And so I went over to my friend's house and I was gonna break the news to her and I had to do it in person. Like it was that serious to me that I couldn't just text her like, hey, I quit drinking. No, I had to go over to her house, sit her down and be like, girl, I'm not gonna drink anymore. Cause I figured she'd be like, oh, okay, well, bye. Nice knowing you. But instead I went to her house and I said, okay, I have to tell you something. I'm not gonna drink alcohol anymore. And she just went, Oh good, that means I don't have to drink when we go out either. And I had no idea that all this time, it was like I, she was drinking because I always made us drink. And so, you know, I learned a lot in this, in this journey. And the feeling of pride that I have in myself, that I did this for me and my family, is something that I just am so grateful for. And I even think about my children, because of the experience that I had with my own you know, father, I just think 
My kids will never have to worry about me. When I'm babysitting their children, they'll know they're with their good, safe grandma. I don't know, I just, I know this is my story and it's not your story, but if you can relate to any of this or any of this holds meaning for you and can offer you some support or give you some kind of strength or motivation, then I guess this video will be worth it that I made this. And giving up alcohol is such a huge undertaking because you know, it really is the only drug in the world that if you quit, people think you have a problem. You could tell other people like, hey, I quit smoking. They're gonna be so happy for you. But if you say, oh, I quit drinking, it's like people start to unfollow you on your social media and it's very, very unusual. But part of that reason is because we have just been programmed to think that alcohol is so amazing. And if you wanna hear more about that, I have a video on the media and how once that curtain is lifted, you just will never see alcohol the same way again. So check out this video if you are interested in seeing that and I will see you later. Thank you so much for watching.